G'day everyone, Matt Oliver Family Bricks here, and today we're going to have a look at the rare Castle in the Forest set 91001. This is part of the Bricklink Designer Program that we'll give some background about. From there we'll have a look at the features and the set and talk about the set in terms of value, playability, displayability, and build experience. After that we'll go back into the actual unboxing so you can see how it comes as it's a little different. We'll also go through the joys of the point of actually being able to build before showing a time lapse of the whole build. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. Let's start off with the minifigures and here we'll first of all have a look at the guy on the raft which you know it's got a nice sort of printing it's a throwback to the old style of the late 80s you also get a couple of archers again nice prints a knight in the old style a knight on a horse with his little lot and also a little farmer dude as well so a nice variety of characters there which you'll be able to create lots of nice scenarios with and have some fun with now let's get on to the main build one of the main features with the set is the way that each of the sides are able to open up and just sort of extend and expand on what you can see and then you can also get access to the internals. It's a throwback to the 87-89 wave where you had three particular sets and the designer here has tried to combine them together so that they're all into one build so paying homage to that. With the main door it's on this winch so you're able to turn it up the top here and it will raise it up it's a relatively simple mechanism and then there's a latch which you can then put and then have it catch on once you get it up as far as you like so i'll just do that and then get it in it's sitting there so hopefully stay up then you just flick it off and it will actually then come down as well like that the roof itself has got this little hatch which opens so that you, if you've got figures inside they can actually climb up to the roof and get access. The whole roof itself will lift up so then you can actually take the door out in its entirety and you can sort of see the mechanism there. Relatively straightforward yet quite effective and simple. So taking a closer look at the internals you can see a couple of different split levels and you've got stairs which then can be accessed and go from one level up to the next. Have your characters moving throughout the space. You've got an archer sticker there on one of your picture frames and I'm sure that's a reference to days gone by a typeset. Taking a look at the other side it opens up and you've got this ladder here which then goes up into this hidden wall which is the fireplace on the other side which we'll eventually see. Coming around a little bit you've got this little sleeping area which is a bed and some cooking and things like that and also to the sort of roof rock sort of hidden feature then sort of opens up as well. A nice little balcony which sticks out this side and you can access it obviously from inside which we'll have a look at. We'll just go through and close it up and then spin it around to the back. So now coming around to the back side, this is one of these sorts of models which also works in the back. A lot of times you get these builds and the third side is kind of meh and doesn't work but this isn't one of them and it's actually got an additional feature in this one. This whole wall itself here actually opens up to the reveal the inside and you can see you know the different levels that door from the balcony we mentioned a bit earlier and then you've got the main door coming in and there's this nice little feature here as well where you can just pull on this little pin here and whooshka got a little trap door so something else to play with from the internal spaces the characters can sort of move up and around you've got this ladder going up to the roof and then also stairs from the other side that we saw going around the other side it's kind of official release, but it's kind of not, as you won't find it in any stores. Best way to think about it is LEGO's version of Kickstarter. LEGO have this platform called LEGO Ideas where fans can submit designs, and if they get 10,000 other people to support it, then it gets to be considered for an official LEGO set. Sometimes, though, when those sets then get considered for whatever reason, LEGO decides not to. This is a new attempt that when those ones don't get as considered for official release, there's a way that they can be released still after that, and this is kind of LEGO's version of Kickstarter. So originally this was meant to be a run of 5,000, but at the time there was such demand the server crashed and it meant that 10,000 orders were accepted. So they ended up producing 10,000 sets, but those 10,000, they sold out within about half an hour and raised LEGO almost a million dollars in that time period. So this was 133 pounds or about 175 US dollars. Now this was always going to be great value because there's 2,000 parts. So on a piece to part ratio that works out to about 6 to 7p or 7 to 8 cents. Usually any time you're under 10p or 10 cents per part, you're doing really, really well. So this was for 2,000 parts. It was almost a no-brainer. It's just a, a, a great value. 
just to put that into a little bit of context, is a Star Wars AT-AT, which is about 20% more expensive, and it has about a thousand parts less. So you can just sort of see, looking at them side by side, for the value that you're getting, it was always going to be a really, really good deal. In terms of playability, I think this is fantastic, as we already highlighted in terms of it opening up front, back, and going the drawbridge that comes down there, all the different little figures, you've got lots of little you know, hanging lines and things which are going to be able to move. So any kids are going to love that, and certainly mine. I'm just itching to get straight at this, so I've been trying to get this done so that they can have a good little play, and they're even helping out doing the build. In terms of displayability, this is infinitely displayable, and probably one of the better models that we've sort of seen and gotten in the castle range recently. Not that there's been a great deal. I mean, you've had the blacksmith, but this is certainly going to be well up there. As you're going around, it looks good from all sorts of angles. And it's got a lot of different foliage and different textures and different things going on, lots to look at. And I guess you could even have it, you know, sort of a clamshell type open as well. So if you want something a little bit different and these things actually pop apart really easily. So if you want to change the configuration around slightly too, then I guess there's always that option as well. The build experience for this was a bit interesting. Going through and actually building it itself, there's lots of different techniques involved. There's some advanced sort of snot sort of things in there, particularly in doing some of these stairs and things. So there's there's a lot there, and there's never any time that you really feel that it's really repetitive and anything like that. Maybe occasionally on a few things up here, but it's certainly not like a Ghostbusters house where you know everything's 20, 30 times just over and over again. And just the different elements and things that they use, like a lot of the main part of the structure is definitely brick built you know small pieces and things like that but then as you get out to some of these other wings and things like that you're getting some other larger pieces so there's certainly even a bit of variety in and amongst that and even over on the tree and things there's some larger shells and pieces that are used for those i must admit one thing i was really surprised by is when i opened it up there was no actual instructions included with it in a printed form it's digital building instructions, which I'm never a really big fan of those. And I think that sort of created some problems within this. You know, first of all, you got to deal with using the app and things like that. And it just wasn't fun, like even just getting started. For me, the app, once I got to about step three, it actually crashed and everything like that. And then you got the whole rigmarole of going through and downloading it and then finding the right one and everything like that. And I can understand from a production point of view, it probably makes things a little bit faster because they don't have to print them out. And then certainly there's a couple of mistakes, which I'm sure they'll be quickly updating once they get pointed out to them which you wouldn't be able to do with physical instructions. But when you've got a build like this, which is going to take four to six hours, being tied down to an iPad or some sort of device like that, it is really annoying. And one of the problems which I find with the digital instructions is, particularly when you've got several different shades of either a green or a gray or something like that, it sometimes gets tricky to be distinguishing between it. Like particularly with a lot of these dark grays in the instructions, they almost look black. So constantly having to sit there and go, okay, no, it's not really black, it's probably a gray. But in particular, when you're building these two parts in here, they actually are actually black in the instructions and the tones are all different and wrong. And at that point in time, these little round pieces, there are some black ones and there are some gray ones. So it's really frustrating. And then going through and figuring out that actually, no, wait a minute, it was meant to be using the other ones. Yeah, I'm just really not a fan of the digital instructions. And particularly on a model of this scale, I think that was a real negative with the build experience. But otherwise, Huge amount of variety, lots of different things going on, and really otherwise enjoyable. So overall, as I said, this is just brilliant, and I think it's so good. It's certainly for me, going into that sphere of, is this set of the year? And it's certainly one of the best sets I've done this year, and I've really enjoyed it. It's just a shame that it's going to be such a limited run, and even on the secondary market, the prices are going crazy. So hopefully it's another thing too, with the blacksmith's shop coming out this year, they can start to get a bit of a sense that... Hey, actually, you know, the fans have been wanting this classic castle stuff for quite some time and well supporting it, so maybe we start seeing a bit more of it in the future. So congratulations to the original designer on this. This is fantastic. Really enjoyed it, and I'm sure many other people will be in the same boat. So I'm hoping this is what I think it is. Christmas has come early. So here we have the outer box, which uh, nice and white. I guess that's going to be the Bricklink branding as opposed to the black, which you get for the 18 plus. 18 plus Castle in the Forest, designed by Pavok. Probably going to butcher that, but anyhow. 
just a nice little change. And on the back side there, sort of showing the back of it and some minifigures and features and things like that. I believe this is meant to have about 2,000 pieces, so compared to other boxes with sets with 2,000 pieces, this does feel like really compact. I guess it doesn't have to sit on a shelf so they don't have to, you know, really attract attention with it as well. And then just all the uh, design by in all the different languages and then Castle of the Forest in all the different languages there as well. So let's get into this, I'm trying to figure out how to do it. Feels like it's almost upside down, but I'm guessing a couple of these little tape slots here. It all comes up. Looks like it slides out there. Bricklink Designer Program 2021 Invitational. Some of that on some card. Oh, the building instructions. I'm guessing that means it's going to be digital instructions. Okay, that's interesting. The sticker sheet. Guessing for some of the shields. So here's the layout of all the contents. You've got the bags one to six up top and seven to 12 down the bottom, plus the sticker sheet and the invitational thing there. Most steps have got two bags and there's a couple of steps, say two and 10, which then have three bags. So in the process of downloading the Lego building instructions, about 173 megabyte app. Okay, I think I've literally gotten to step three and it's crashed. It just won't do anything. I tried to change the settings, nothing's happening here. I guess I've just been messing around for about the last 10 minutes and I think I've managed to get it back to now where it's working. Um, for some reason it just seemed to be frozen, but the really annoying thing about this is every time you exit and then come back into it, and then, then you've got to refind all the bits and pieces, it's got to load up again and all that, and it just takes so much time. It's like, this is why you need a physical book. Like, it's really frustrating. <laughs>
much and things like that. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and or consider subscribing. Here are some other videos that you might be interested in. Thanks very much for watching. And if you type in the word forest in the comments, then I'll know that you watched all the way to the end. Thanks again.